coming to the remedies provided under the industrial disputes act so id act has developed multi pronged approach multi pronged in the sense there is a series of attempts made to resolve dispute first there is an attempt to have an amicable settlement of a dispute next there is an attempt to adjudication then there is an attempt for state intervention let me put up in a graphical format of industrial disputes act resolution systems as i said there are four styles of resolution of dispute adopted by id act number 1 preventive methods here we have works committee to do that job inquisitorial methods court of inquiry is an authority which does a work which is may not be in identical to inquisitorial style of functioning but mostly resembles inquisitorial method cooperative method conciliation officer and board of conciliation deal with this cooperative methods including grievance redressal mechanism and lastly adversarial method there were labor court industrial tribunal and national tribunal deal with the such processes so these are the authorities involved with the resolution of dispute before going into the powers functions duties of these authorities let us look into another important player in this whole industrial scheme of industrial disputes act and the player is appropriate government section 2a defines appropriate government so either it can be a central government or the state government which can be an appropriate government now what this appropriate government does is it has withheld or it is holding the right to refer the dispute to different authorities and this right is exercised by the appro appropriate government depending upon the urgency of the matter so what powers does this appropriate government enjoys it has got four important powers number 1 appropriate government can decide whether to refer or not so therefore parties have no direct right to approach these authorities it has to be through a system called referral system and here the appropriate government can decide whether to refer or not secondly when to refer the time will be fixed by the appropriate government thirdly who to refer whether it is conciliation or um, board of conciliation whether it is court of inquiry whether it is other authorities and lastly and very important after referral of a dispute the appropriate government continues to enjoy control over the dispute and here they try they can withdraw the referral they can re refer to somebody else they can amend the award pronounced by the authority so therefore the appropriate government graphically speaking appropriate government can refer two kinds of things to the authorities the dispute between the parties as well as connected matters between the parties now below i have given the list of authorities to whom the such referral could be made coming to the first method that is inquisitorial method briefly speaking about inquisitorial method here is an authority who does everything from receiving complaint investigating into the complaint arguing the complaint and pronouncing the judgment on the complaint so this is the fastest way of resolution of dispute but what we have here is one authority who comes closest to this style of functioning that is court of inquiry now interesting thing about court of inquiry is uh, no dispute can be referred to court of inquiry what can be referred to court of inquiry is only the connected matters so therefore court of inquiry he doesn't resolve any dispute but it only look into the connected matters so let me explain this system with an illustration so let's see that there is a large scale retrenchment going on now retrenchment in means no work so you need not come to work take some compensation and walk out so when there is a large scale of retrenchment going on 
the dispute concerning retrenchment goes to various authorities labor court industrial tribunal national tribunal etc but when the state specifically the labor department look into the issue why there is such a large scale retrenchment let us take example of that automobile industry the automobile industry is undergoing this large scale retrenchment labor court everybody is looking into the compensation part of the retrenchment court of inquiry would conduct an inquiry into connected matter why there is such a large scale retrenchment why do the automobile industries were unable to provide a job to these work their their own workers so they find out a reason that uh, there is a slap a slank in the sales of the automobiles there is a dip and the reason being that the higher rate of interest by the banks as well as the higher duty imposed on the automobiles now here court of inquiry found the reason for the retrenchment so immediately the labor department pr proposes changes into this tax system as well as they make a recommendation to rbi to change the interest rate system so this is what the job of court of inquiry is so they don't deal with the actual dispute they deal with the connected matters now court of inquiry is headed by a uh, one person or two persons where one person acts as a chairman and they are they have a jurisdiction to look into all connected matters relating to the dispute now coming to cooperative method now this is a method where tripartite dialogue goes on between the parties so there is disputing parties that is employer and the workman and the next one would be the state which acts as a facilitator supplementer as well as a person who is assisting the resolution of dispute so here predominantly we follow discussion or negotiation process and the state that is the third party will try to ensure a win win situation between the parties now this system helps in maintenance and in the, the nourishment of the relationship between the parties once a party goes through the conciliation process that is a cooperative process they can expect better relationship between the parties with the higher truth and faith amongst the parties so this is how the discussion goes on the discussion the negotiation is between two parties that is the employer and the workman the conciliation officer acts as a facilitator so conciliation officer acting as a facilitator is it mandatory or is it at the option of the conciliator the answer lies in the classification of industry so if you look at industry it is classified into two categories importance based on the importance we have got ordinary industries and industries called as public utility services depending on the size we have three categories large medium and the small industry so large industry is the one with 100 or more workmen and then between 50 to 100 is medium and the small industry is below 50 workmen now that is number are related to workforce now here for today's discussion we are concerned with the first classification that is ordinary industry and the public utility services so where a dispute is concerned with public utility services conduct of conciliation proceedings is mandatory but whereas under ordinary industries it depends upon the will and the wish of the conciliation officer that too with certain guidelines so he enjoys a lot of powers as well as functions and duties but he has been given only 14 clear days working days to discharge his duties so he cannot expect to keep on working out a form a, a kind of a settlement between the parties he has to give result within 14 days so these are some of the important role of conciliation officers which he has to perform to be a successful conciliation officer so the role of conciliation officer when it comes to maintaining a relationship between the parties and 
settling the dispute between the parties. He has to play a multiple role and some of the important role that he has to play is he should first of all he should enjoy the trust and faith of both the parties. So, therefore, he should ex exhibit high moral stand, uh, standing among the parties. Secondly, after exhibiting his high moral standards, he has to make sure that he maintains a cordial relationship with the parties. So, when he is maintaining such cordial relationship with the parties, he can ensure cooperation rather than competition by the parties. Most importantly, he should also act like a, a friend and also a vent for an anger because disputing parties have lost faith among each other and as well as they are they have they have been maintaining a lot of anger within themselves and there should be a vent to to vent out the anger of the parties so he should act like a vent for the anger of the parties and at the same time he should not allow the anger to be exhibited against the party but he should take it on his own so, when conciliation officer is functioning, he takes up two kinds of settings. One is a private sitting, where the conciliation officer is sitting with the other party in absence of one party. So, here the discussion can be very, very much frank, they need not hide anything as there is a only conciliation officer who is going to hear the discussion. So, at that stage he should encourage them to vent out their anger, not when the other party is present. Because the moment they speak out emotionally, the discussion tend to get derailed and they tend to discuss emotional matters rather than the actual dispute in hand. Then the conciliation officer is under the duty to encourage the parties to adopt cooperative method and also he should also make the least of common interest between the parties as of conflicting interest between the parties. So, the interests between the parties are of two kinds common and conflicting. Conflicting are the issues to be resolved. Then what is the use of making a list of common interest? Now, these common interest are the reasons for the parties to keep on discussing and negotiating. The parties are interested in resolving their conflicts, but at the same time they are more much more interested in protecting their common interests. So, that is the reason why he need to make a list of conflicting as well as common interests.